Hello, Plague Rats. This is Emily Autumn, and you are watching TV. Hallo Schatten TV, wir sind immer noch auf dem Plage Noir und bei mir ist jetzt Emily Autumn. Hi. Hi. Very nice to talk to you. Oh, thanks. Um, you're on your own without your girls. It's weird. Promoting your book. Yes. That will be released in December. Exactly. Shipping It's out very soon. It's really, really heavy, I thought. So it is really <laughs> heavy. It is, it is heavy and it is heavy. Yeah. It is heavy in so many ways. Um, Yeah, it's pretty intense, but it, it is very strange to have gotten on a plane by myself. I haven't done that in ages. It's always the five of us traveling together. So it's kind of, it's sad, but then I realize like this has to be about my story about that. And they also, they need to be washing their costumes at home for the <laughs> second leg of the North American oh, okay. tour because we smell really, really bad. Hmm. You can't wash those things on the river. Like, you know how long it takes yeah. a corset to dry. Yeah, for sure. You can't get those dry cleaned because of all the crystals on yeah, them that will just sure. come unglued. So it's all about washing it in the bathtub. So that's all already a topic I wanted to ask you about. Perfect. About fashion. Yeah. What role does fashion play in your life? Um, I think a very large one in that it's all about the visual expression of the individual <laughs> clearly we like that and when it comes to music and the show it's about creating the whole world and the whole picture that without that and for me it's every thought every detail every crystal every craziness every everything matters because that's where they say like the cliche god lives in the details and she does and it's all about just every way that you can find it in yourself to express <laughs> the truth that is you or the story that you're trying to tell. And all of this tells a story. So it's a storytelling tool, essentially. And a detail that always accompanies you is the symbol of the heart. Yes. Does that have a special meaning beyond the, oh, yeah. the regular one? It's a few meanings combined into one, but the overriding meaning is um, self-protection, which is something that growing up until recently I was very, very bad at. And I'm still not great, but I'm better. And it's a reminder to myself that I am not this invincible unicorn creature. I am an actual, normal, not special, flesh and blood human being, human girl that can be completely hurt and broken like everybody else. And until that happens to you, you don't realize how fragile you actually are. And this reminds me. And it's almost like, now that you know what can be done to you, take better care of yourself and I remind myself every day when I put it on it's that time with yourself alone and girls know that with makeup it's not about mm. I need to cover my flaws and look pretty for somebody it's about that is ceremonial just like African tattoo rituals mm. and all of that it's that time alone with yourself that you get to just do mirror magic because the mirror is a very magical yeah. thing and absorbs like your energy and your soul and all of that and so it's just about that time with you because I don't get a lot of alone time these days but when I'm in there and I get three minutes to just draw this on myself and it just brings me back to why I'm doing all of this and where I am and what I still need to work on because this is basically a warning oh, on my face that's it. just say the word tattoo just yes. watch this tattoo may I ask the meaning of these sure um, for example, <laughs> this is my asylum cell number uh -huh. my prison number oh it's for real though but it's like This was about accepting once you're an inmate, you're always an inmate. So just accept that that's a reality and move on and find a way to deal with it. But you're never going to be free again. And this being branded just tells me just deal with that. That's reality. Mm. Get over it. So you don't try to hide away such exactly. topics like bipolar disorder and stuff like I think that? It's stuff that we desperately need to talk about. And I think... And there's so many things that we talk about now, like it's fine to talk about sexual abuse, it's fine to talk about rape, it's fine to talk about all of these things, but there's still a lot that we don't talk about and that are incredibly misunderstood um, people, misunderstood illnesses, um, mistreated things. I mean, there's still massive torture and abuse that happens in everyday psych wards, and I would know, uh, to people because of, of these things and people being locked up for being crazy who are not crazy at all. <laughs> and that's the joke of it. That's why this is, that's why all of this, that's why this is all so fucking funny to me is that um, I was locked up and I'm called this and called this and called this. What is the fact? 
I'm not crazy. That's why this is awesome. That's why I had to make this whole career out of it in this world is in order to own it and just be like, yeah, yes, I am fucking, I am a lunatic. That is it. And then you take it back and you take the power away from other people who would just say that you are. And you take the whole topic with a lot of humor. And from some paved over part of my mind, I heard the warning words of the social worker who had screened me when I first walked into the mental health center months ago. Hi, Emily, it's pronounced Emily, right? So I understand that you are bipolar, manic depressive, and that you've been having a really rough time with it lately. Did she just say lately? And why the odd emphasis on R? Was there a test? Family history of bipolar disorder? Yes. Family history of suicide? Yes. But is it really that simple? Maybe. She continues. You were laughing so much about the sentence Do you feel suicidal today, oh, yeah. right at the moment? <laughs> it makes me so happy that everybody got the joke and that they laughed with me because it's supposed to be funny. It's, it's one of those things where it's like, it's funny because it's true. If it weren't true, it wouldn't be that funny. But that is the truth of it, and that's what happens. And for me, honestly, it was just like, this is going to kill you. All of this is going to kill you unless you find some way to make a joke out of it because otherwise I can't. I can't survive with all of this having happened with all of this still happening with all of this in my head if I can't find a way to make this utterly hilarious. It's so backwards how all of this happened, this, that all of this happens for so many people. It's so fucked up that it's funny. Like, how can this be? Hmm. Who's really the crazy hmm. one here? The person on this side of the bars or the person on this side of the bars? Really? Let's, let's somehow test this because I have a feeling it's not the inmates all the time. So it's funny. It just is. And if you can't joke about it, you die. Yeah. So this is a good attempt to keep going on.